Alright. Let's make sure this music's not too loud. Got to bring this down a little bit. Okay, I think that's good enough. <sighs> All right. Let's give ourselves a little bit of time for anybody to shuffle in before I start. Let's get the chat up here. So that's worked out. Make sure that's working. Yep. Okay. get this started got a lot of work done last night after the last stream so I'm huh, kind of trying to figure out anything else I need to do before I start getting to actual world building we might actually get to world building today in terms of the uh, the content of the stream. So that would be cool. Okay. So, anyone show up yet? Eh, it looks like we got a couple of people joining in. So that looks all right. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, got a lot of work done last night after the last stream. I took a break and then I kind of just zoned in. Like, I, I kind of lost perspective and just kept working for a while. Uh, I got some sleep uh, and then just kind of kept working afterwards because, I don't know, I was on a roll. So I finished all of the rivers and the lake systems. Well, the, basically the lakes and rivers, I finished all of that. Uh, obviously, I finished all the sea contours last night. For the most part, I might be able to edit them or make them look a little bit better, a little bit more granular, but that's not a hugely important part of the map. Uh, so I got all that done. And then I also went ahead and uh, started putting in all of the national borders uh, that exist uh, here. So we're kind of at the point where um, I need to start labeling the map. Uh, but because I, I don't want it to be like super cluttered, I'm thinking, and because it's not really going to be put anywhere, uh, with all the names on it, uh, since it's kind of more of a reference thing for my book, uh, I'm thinking about just putting numbers on all of the, uh, nations so that I can kind of keep an idea of what's, uh, what's where and like a big master file, uh, that I can work from. So, I will, uh, well, first things first, I'll give you guys a little preview or, like, a view of what, uh, 
I was able to do last night. So I'll, I'll switch off the uh, the borders layer, um, and we can see. And I'll also switch off the grid so it's a little bit easier. So you can see like the river system. And this is basically uh, what you saw uh, last. Uh, like last time so you know nothing too big there uh didn't really edit any of that then we got uh basically everything i wanted to get done in terms of the rivers and like on this uh continent so you now we got like a nice river system here at the lake and then we got this like nice long river valley which is what this is essentially um, little, uh, lake here to fill out the empty space, another, uh, big connecting river system, a couple of small rivers that might not show up on the, uh, stream here and there, uh, you know, just what, what was needed, nothing too much, uh, some rivers right around here, that emptied off from this range that I put in, um, some uh, rivers going into this like, this big uh, lake empties out into this uh, 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 this river, you know, just what was needed uh, to fill everything out. <laughs> Love sniping. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it is a fantasy world, so the, technically, well, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a kraken because that's uh, technically a giant squid, but uh, could definitely be something like a. Uh, a uh, sea monster. Those those would exist in this world. It could be a whole. It could actually just be a, a Triton city if you're going to use the races from the um, Mythic Odysseys of Theros book. It just could be a city dedicated to fish people. Yeah, and uh, uh, welcome to uh, Mikey, who's joining me, uh, keeping me sane for this stream. Uh, <laughs> um, I see, Roach. I'm not a therapist. Right? I'm not that good. I'm not qualified, right? Oh, yeah. The most I can do is like give you someone to talk your insanity out with, too. Well, that's good, too. That's good, too. But I have not slept for a while, oh. so I need some... Uh, one second. My grandfather is knocking on the window. I gotta let him in. Someone's locked him out. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I have not slept much last night. I was uh, working on this a lot, so... Yeah, we got, uh, we got all these systems kind of made... Uh, so that that part of the map's done. The uh, I could have stopped there. Could have stopped there. All honesty, and not done uh, much else, and then done the rest on stream. But where's the fun in that? So went ahead and did national borders as well. So we can see in like this little Europe of the. Uh, of this world, I've got uh, the borders laid out with a nice uh, like checker or a nice like a uh, hash or dashed line pattern uh, around here. I also put in like this uh, shaded red area because I like the idea of this being like a disputed territory between this nation and this nation, so they have like both claims on it, but it's not really recognized by everybody, so it's kind of just a a disputed terrain in the area. Yeah, yeah, Zor, it's, I, like, I got to that point, and I just, I just could not stop myself, I had to keep going, uh, because I knew if I didn't, if, if I went to bed, and I just kind of stopped, uh, it'd take me a while to get going, to get the steam back, uh, going, so it would just, it was just not worth it for me, um, even though I did miss out on all, quite a bit of sleep. Uh, and I technically should be recording uh, for Shadow Empire right now, but... Ah, fuck it. Uh, that game is almost done, <laughs> to be honest. Like, it's just clearing out miners which don't pose a threat. So I, I might, like, even though I want to get to the end screen, I might just end that series early, just for how uh, grindy it gets after you kind of deal with the majors. So, yeah, kind of pushing it off. Uh, I think I still got a backlog for a day or two, so I can record uh, tonight or tomorrow without too much trouble. Hey, Oddball. Welcome. Missed you yesterday, uh, for the, uh, stream yesterday. Uh, you missed a lot. Uh, we got, uh, we're very far into this, uh, 
into this project now. Uh, we're just, uh, we're basically at the labeling stage, which is, uh, yeah, I assumed, Oddball, I assumed. I assumed you were working. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking we're actually going to get to some actual world building in the sense of, like, narrative world building instead of just, uh, instead of just building the world map, uh, which is what we've been doing so far. Uh, and yeah, so, uh, so, like, that's, like, national border. I like that disputed territory marker that I've kind of put in there. I like the way that turned out. Um, and, uh, yeah, this big open area, I decided to split it in between two, because, uh, I like this being, like, a quasi-Japan, and I like the idea of them just having a lot of colonies and, like, invaded territories along the coast that, uh, are here, so, um... You know, I've got some areas that I expect them to have control of, like uh, colonies or invaded territories. So uh, we got that. Uh, is the Korea in this world then? Which 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 is the Korea that Japan took over? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's an applicable analog uh, to it. I mean, you've got a lot of a lot of nice peninsulas there along the along the north north continent there. So a few of those might work. Yeah, it could. Uh, but. Uh, but and what did Oddball say? Uh, I was working today with a uh, coworker. Went home sick yesterday, and they threw my shop in quarantine. Oh, well, that sucks for the quarantine. But hey, you got a day off, so that's good. You get paid for that, uh, Oddball? Since you were he works uh, for the government. I doubt work. it. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I keep forgetting he's technically employed by the government. Not uh, technically, directly. <laughs> he works. He uh, it depends in, on who wants to pay them. He's in the military. <laughs> it depends on which uh, on which Arabian prince wants to pay them to secure the oil fields. Morning, Andronus. Morning. Uh, and then we got like a whole mess of. Uh... He's getting paid no matter what. Though. Hey, well, there you go, Oddball. That's good. Hey, uh, money. Isn't that what yeah. everybody loves? We all love that cash money. Well, yeah, no, you work for the military, so you just get paid for... I mean, you're. it's not like you cannot go to work. You just ex you exist as a uniform, so you get paid. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this northern continent's just a whole mess of... Uh, in my head, a whole bunch of like various different colonial holdings and native uh, nations that kind of exist here, so... Uh, there's a lot, you know, denser borders and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, ones that don't necessarily follow the uh, the rules of national borders uh, when it comes to, like, uh, developed states. Uh, because uh, they're more tribalistic uh, in their existence. Uh, not a huge amount of those in this world, but that's because it's uh, because of the setting. Uh, time period equivalent. It doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. I mean, once you get to, like, 1900... It's only like deep Africa and the Amazon that still has tribals in it. Yeah, so that's kind of the uh, the idea here because it's, it's like a 1910s, 1920s uh, technological settings. Yeah. Indeed, Andronus, the dotted lines are the borders. There's even more then. There's even less tribal. Yeah. Uh, but yes, dotted lines are the borders. And so we got that. And then the big uh, northwestern continent uh, has a couple of large nations in it and then there's this area here there's a whole bunch of uh uh not uh, dashed lines like the other borders but dotted lines uh and my idea behind this was like um this is kind of like the equivalent of an, like an america or a uh or like a like the major like other continent uh i like the idea that this was um that this area here is like a um Oh, what a, not not reservation, but just an area where the uh, the local uh, natives, like the uh, the Aboriginal uh, individuals that uh, lived here, uh, have been pushed into, and so all these like little subdivisions, which are hard to see here because of just how small the borders are, uh, have like eked out their own little tribal control areas. So they're like little micro states that exist here. So. It's just something interesting. Uh, so this would be like a, some sort of like maybe like a, like confederacy or something of a, of independent states, independent uh, uh, tribal nations, in this like area. 
and then a couple of like larger uh, subdivisions of uh, nations on the uh, eastern and southern uh, regions of that continent. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of what we got going on right now. So <clears throat> basically, uh, to, to like point of fact, base uh, this map is done. Like the map itself is done. Like the the borders are just there because I need to. The whole point of this was so I had reference for where nations were. Um. But the map itself, like I can take the national borders off, and this is a this is a atlas. This is like a, this is like a terrain map of the world that I can export uh, right now, and I can even put on the latitude and longitudinal lines, and it works perfectly, and it's done. Oh well, uh, welcome back. If it's been a year. So yeah, the map itself's done. Now we're going to get to the world building part of it where I am going to start labeling the nations. Uh, but I'm not going to do it on the map because there's not enough room on the map to do that. It would get really cluttered. So we're just going to, we're going to number label and then we're going to label all of the nations like in a separate word document, like a master word document that I've got set up uh, for it. Feel free to chime in as well, uh, Mikey. I know I'm talking uh, a lot. I've been disconnected for the last like minute because I think people are. I think there's. I think the fact that I was plugged into my Ethernet yesterday gave me a, a very obvious feel of how I should probably actually buy an Ethernet cable that's like seven meters long and connect it up to my computer. Yeah, point. Ethernet cables aren't that uh, expensive. I've got a. Oh. I've got a hundred foot. I've got a hundred foot Ethernet cable that connects me to my actual modem downstairs. I've got yeah, that thing. Yeah, it'd probably uh, be uh, cheaper for me to do the whole Ethernet to power thing that you can do. I don't know if that's as effective or as. Uh, it could be. I don't know. I don't know what your wiring's like. Uh, yeah, Apocalypse. I don't know. The uh, the red part is like a disputed territory. I like the idea that there's like a disputed territory between two of the nations on the uh, eastern part of this continent. So like, like a uh, like a Kashmir. Uh, kind of region like between India, Pakistan, and, and chi uh, China, like in our world. Um, so, uh, like, I like the idea that this maybe has like a whole bunch of like iron deposits or or like some sort of like resource that's very important. Um, so, like uh, this Western nation and this Eastern nation both claim it, uh, but nobody else is willing to support their claims. So it's kind of just a uh, like we own this, but we it's own an up in the air claim. It. And then they're sitting there like, actually, we're here. Can you leave us alone, please? Uh, also, Azura mentions that uh, the plugs of his cable or, or their cable are made of either brass or gold. Yeah, that's pretty common for higher end cabling. Yeah, doesn't do anything though. Actually, like at least the gold doesn't do anything. The gold's not like like those really like super expensive uh, cords. Like I think uh, who was it? What's his name? Uh, Linus has done tests of like you know thousand dollar hdmi co uh, and usb cables and they have literally no difference <laughs> yeah aside from like you know minor things like maybe durability well, hold on maybe i can get mikey a little bit louder well you're at 200 percent on my end uh let's uh, let me check and make sure my well i've got i've got the mic. i've got my i've got my desktop audio pretty low but that was just because the music was kind of loud and i've got like my amazon music super low and it's i don't know if i can bring it any lower try it try it now try i just turned my gain up a little bit how's that sound okay i think that might be better any better Rodbo? at least the waveforms on my uh on my read look better so but yeah the whole idea of um of buying expensive cables is like the aluminium ribbed ones are great because they actually last a very long time. Yeah, like uh, braid. Like uh, I will say, like I'll I'll spend extra on like a braided cable. Yeah, because like, uh, your that's your whole it. thing is like don't let the cable wear out because if it does, then you have to wait for a replacement. Yeah, it's the, your job a braided cable is the only is the only like premium thing of a cable that I'll pay extra for. But like if yeah. it's if it's like oh we've got you know fucking uh, you know antibacterial coatings on the contacts and shit like that. yeah I don't give a shit you give me the braided cable and that's it that's the yeah that's uh, okay yeah, both Everybody of the uh, so that's both good. of the cables I have connecting my monitor to my graphics card are both braided 
aluminium braided uh, cables because I was like, I don't want either of them to break. That yeah. was my big thing. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that's fine. And I say that's perfect. Oh yeah, gold plating is for corrosion resistance. Well, as someone who lives in a in a very wet country, corrosion resistance is very very good to have. Only only in certain things, I would say it's not like a huge. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, to be fair, I like when when it's plugged into stuff. It's not like it's gonna get wet in there unless the room I'm in is really humid, which not really a common thing in this country to have humid rooms. Hmm. There's that dyslexia hitting me. It just hits hard, man. There's some days where you're like, bruh, the dyslexia, man, it's just fucking... Oh. There are days where it's like that, alright? Oh, yeah. As somebody who is uh, dyslexic, uh, I... Oh, yeah. I Same. Am, I it's am great bad. <laughs> there are some days where it's like, oh, it's not so bad today. And there's some days where you're like, how do you spell and... I'm not it's that bad. bad most of the time, but it's uh, like I can like I, I get what you're saying though. It can it can really hit you. Oh yeah, it can hit you like a ton of bricks some days. It's like oh, that's not how you spell that word. How do you spell it properly? And then you spell it the same way four or five times. Yeah, now I got to figure out a good script, a uh, good font for this. Just something that's not, I have a lot of fonts on this computer, so you guys are seeing a lot of these <laughs> that are compatible with <laughs> Clip Studio Paint. I mean, I could go Times New Roman, but that doesn't seem fun. Uh, you see, that's very basic. That's like the vanilla ice cream. You know, that's like the the shit everybody sort of likes, but nobody would say, yeah, my favorite ice cream is vanilla. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, um, Azura, are you talking about Asgard's map generator and uh, the associated uh, city generator that's accompanied with that? I because actually the, use the, the city, city generator of, for our campaign. Yeah, the city, the city generator in that is really good. But the one thing about the map generator is that it's super... I wouldn't say it's very, very... Uh, it's not very... It's uh, good if you don't intuitive. want to do anything. Yeah, I know I have, fr I have friends that don't like working on maps. So, like, they just want a campaign setting. So, they'll just, like, generate that. And then that's what they'll work with. Uh, like, straight out. Yeah, it's like, you can just keep hitting the random button until you get something you like to look up and go, yeah. that's about right. And that's perfectly fine. That. That's perfectly yeah. fine. If you're not, like, into world building and you just kind of want, like, a, a cool little setting. Minecraft city design? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that could work. Uh, we'll use Courier new. Um, size 30 is definitely a no-go. Uh, size 10 will work. We'll go size 5 for smaller states. Okay. Scale it up at least to a one-to-one -one ratio and be used for pretty neat-looking hamlets or towns. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you, you were could... playing it on, like, a, a tabletop simulator, uh, Asgard's does 3D maps. I don't know if it uh, applies to the city gen, but if you could make a 3D map and place it straight onto tabletop sim, it would save you time, I'd imagine. Okay, now I got to try and... Blackout and TC. Blackout. I don't font. know. I've I've got a lot. Roach is like, let me scroll for five minutes. I got a lot of fonts. I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't think I do. Use them for letters and stuff for your D and D group. Probably, is that like a a very is it? It's a legible cursive because there's a lot of cursive that I see online and I'm like, I hate the way that looks and I can't read it. It reminds me a lot of uh, one of my friends, well not friends, one of my classmates in school. He wrote cursive and the writing he wrote, I couldn't read it and none of the teachers could read it, which is why he kept failing tests, but he was super intelligent. He just didn't know how to write properly. Yeah, I have problems with uh, with people understanding my uh, my writing 
uh, but I also was uh, I went I, I went through uh, a period where they tried uh, I went to a school where they tried to teach me how to write with my right hand um, oh, left handed yeah I'm left handed yeah that's the point uh, so it kind of fucked me up for <laughs> Which is a spawn of the devil because he's left-handed. Therefore, he must be taught how to do, how to do things right-handed. Ironically, that happened in a, to a friend of mine in school who was left-handed. He was told from a very young age that he should write. He should do everything right-handed because he, because uh, if you're left-handed, you're you're some sort of relation to the devil or something. And I was like, that's pretty fucking creepy, and also very very detrimental to the self-esteem of a small child. Yeah. Uh, like, if I, I mean, like, font-wise, like, I have a lot mostly just because I, I needed to, I needed to have a way of having, like, other languages in my D&D games represented. So, like, uh, if I can find it here, um, like, I had a lot of handouts that I gave out recently. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the clue folder at? Act 6. Roach has been doing a lot of that in D&D, so if you guys are looking for more of that, uh, pick up the D, D streams at like 7.30. Here. Like I had this map, and this is like in the common like language, but I also had like an elvish. Oh, uh, we can't see that, Roach. No, no it, it it is. It give it a oh, second. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it took a second. Yep. Yeah, there's the there's the thing. Uh, but I had like uh I had the common, and then I had this elvish version of it that was given out to everybody that couldn't sp uh that couldn't speak the language, and like here's one that's like uh that, and then there's the elvish version. And that and then the elvish version of that so i've got uh, like i've got i've got these kind of scattered around so I've, that's kind of what i've also got a dwarvish one and an orcish and that kind of stuff like azura's take when you don't know what dialect you want languages to have just screw it and make it scottish yeah basically I mean, that works yeah depending on how thick the scottish accent is they could be more and more like out in the boonies yeah it's very true Make everyone from John O'Groats the literally the booniest part of Scotland. <laughs> if you don't know where that is, Roach, it's literally the most northern tip of Scotland. You couldn't be any closer to Norway. <laughs> I did not know. I'm not. I'm. I've got broad strokes. I'm really good broad strokes when it comes to uh, geography, but I'm bad with like local level geography. But when would I ever need it? I mean, you do, like, you know, live in America. So why yeah. would you go anywhere else? Uh, you know, getting this, away this from This is where if I had a camera on, country. I'd look at it in a certain way. Yeah, why would yeah. I ever want to leave unless I wanted to get away from the hellhole that is this country? <laughs> We're all just looking at the cameras right now, like, yep, yeah, we all know what Roach is saying. Just yep. don't tell anybody about it, because he will be thrown into a white van. Why isn't D&D &D happening this week? Uh, uh... <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> not sure what happened to him. He just hasn't he hasn't appeared in like six weeks. He hasn't uploaded to YouTube. He hasn't streamed. He's just, well, he's just gone. Yeah, that, that does work pretty fine. Apocalypse. Uh... I like how I don't know I I like some of the ta like uh, I, I got a lot of those fonts because I also like the, the way they looked like I can definitely have a a nice um, looks at the camera like Jim from the office yeah like, that's about right yeah I can have a nice looking dwarvish or uh, draconic or you know that kind of stuff Uh, but yeah, guys, this is kind of what we're doing right now. We're labeling, uh, we're going to use numbers to label a good stret a good chunk of all of these nations, and then we're going to think up names for all of them, uh, for the ones that I don't have. This whole section here, this, like, little peninsula that's broken up, I already have, like, in my head, world-building-wise, I know what I want it to be. I want it to be the equivalent of, like, the Rome of this region, um that uh or like the Italian. what is the what is the peninsula italy is on is it the italian peninsula or does it have a name like the sure it's just called the italian peninsula because it's always sort of been italian well no it hasn't yeah. though because it's been roman and you know and that kind of stuff which is the latin um i'm just wondering because i know the because there's you know uh, there's the iberian peninsula it has a name so i don't know it's but either way it's called the italian peninsula yeah well either way 
I uh, just but, Googled it. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I want this to be like a Rome, uh, like former Rome, and I want it to have in this world broken apart at one point. So at this, po uh, so during the point in the story that uh, the book's going to be picking up at, it's more akin to like a Holy Roman Empire kind of thing, where although it is one nation, it's a whole bunch of uh, smaller dookies and dungeons yeah, and that are all competing against each other. So I'm just gonna put yeah. like a broad strokes label here because it, it's you all would have that little nation. tiny one. I don't know, like right in the middle of that leftern peninsula, a little tiny one on the right hand side of it. It could be like a free city. You could have that one as like one it of could the free be. Cities they're they're, they're small enough to be at. Yeah, I mean for reference wise, again, because I I, I, did, I did have it on here. This is uh, this is the world in comparison with the uh, the size of this. Uh, of this, like our world scaled, they're they're both scaled to, to together. So the Italic Peninsula, the Italic Peninsula, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't speak Italics. Yeah, th this is the world scaled to this world, so you can kind of get a sense of how big this is. That Italian Peninsula equivalent is actually fairly large, and even when you compare it to the real world one in ours, it's it's oh, pretty yeah. big. So uh, there's a lot of people. You know, and there's a lot of land there. Yeah. Uh, so we got that. Uh, what number however, are we on? However much of it is occupied, though, we're not sure. We'll we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. It might be a lot like uh, America, where it's like the East Coast and West Coast are super populated, but everything in between is sort of barren. <laughs> Who the fuck wants to live in like? Where I don't know any, and like that's the, exactly the point. I don't know any of the central states aside from like Utah, because people I know live there. Central? That's a weird. Uh, that's not like how. Oh, you know, Arizona. That's kind of that's that's more. Nope. That's that's, that's not really central. That's a western though. state. Uh, yeah. See, the know. thing is, I the just, thing is, yeah. the western and central uh, don't actually mean geography. Western and central, like actual ge geographical location. Because they, they they began getting their labels before we had reached the west coast. Oh yeah, that's the funny thing is that you guys call the northwest like the central area, and I'm like, this is weird. Yeah, because I live in the Midwest. This? Yeah, yeah. Roach lives in the Midwest, and I'm like, no, you live in the middle, <laughs> bruh. Why? Why are you? Why were your ancestors? Well, not your ancestors, because you you're semi-recent semi-recently american but all these other ancestors are like bro why are you, why are you bad at naming things <laughs> can't you just like name it what it is and realize there's more land to go the northern and the middle states are really pretty yeah i can agree with that i've seen pictures oh yeah no a lot of a lot of states are really pretty uh like montana I, I, I like the way Montana looks. Montana is one of those really pretty states. I'm like, yeah, that's 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 nice. <laughs> I'm in Arizona. We don't need your score. We already have heat and COVID down. <laughs> Fuck sake. <laughs> poor poor Arizona. Always getting the the blunt end of the stick. Yep. Utah deserves it though. Let's be honest. Utah kind of, kind of deserves it. Oh, you're awful at naming things, uh, Apocalypse. Like, you guys are just awful at naming things. The flyover states have been labeled the flyover states since they've been able to be flown over. So... Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't necessarily... We, uh, we, we gender neutral people, we'll say. Apocalypse. Okay, we got that. The 
first iteration of Hollywood was funded by the Communist Party. That's pretty fucking funny. Communist Party still exists. Yeah, I know. They got their first... The Communist uh, Party in Ireland, too. Yeah, uh, I think they actually... I don't remember if it was the Communist Party or the Socialist or the American Socialist Party got their first um, like elected official in, like I don't know, 30 years or something like that. I think it was like a... Uh, it was like a a mayor or, or a council or like a town council member or something like that. Huh. It's probably about time if I'm honest with you. Yeah. I was rooting for him. Like, I can't help it. I like underdogs. I, I, that, that is a, that is a thing of, of mine. That is a character thing of mine is I always root for the underdog. Um, that's a very American thing. Just naturally, I, I like I like the underdog story. Um, oh, you're not American? Oh, that's what I mean. That's sorry, apocalypse. I won't I won't uh, associate you with them then. This is a broad scope label there. Most people know that Roach have are American, so I assume. Uh, not a lot, actually. I mean, yes, the majority are, but I mean, it's it's about a 50-50 mix of American to non-Americans. I mean, Americans make up the bulk of my um, uh, viewer base. Of my viewer base by number, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're... Uh, I mean, isn't it activating the fence protocols? Oh no, it's Liberty Prime. Everybody hide. Oh shit. <laughs> Right, I'll be back in a second. I gotta order food because it's late. Well, not late, but it's about time to order food. Right, right. Six. So, yeah, interesting stream, guys. Right, right. Me just putting numbers down on a map. <laughs> God, I have to apologize, Apocalypse, because I probably... I, I don't remember if I've done any, like, games where I've had to pronounce German stuff, but I've probably fucked it up at one point or another. That was probably very painful of a series if it did occur. Okay, we are chugging along here. And I apologize, everybody, that I didn't have like a, uh, a pre schedule thing. I'm I'm not bad with numbers, Apocalypse. I'm not that bad with numbers. I'm fairly good. That and also there is a there is quite literally a line of numbers that I couldn't possibly fuck up, like right here on the screen. Uh so <laughs> So screw you. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we're we're actually almost through the numbering process. Well, if you're watching for the commentary, you must be bored as hell. <laughs> I am not that interesting.
Almost missed that one. Actually, I missed a couple of these. I didn't mislabel them, I just missed them. I almost lost my spot. Okay. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Andronus. Battletech as in the, uh, the video game. The Paradox game uh, Battletech. I think I got all of them. Did I get all? Nope, missed one. It's a good game. I like that game. Really disappointed that uh, Mech Warrior wasn't as good as uh, as I was hoping it was be. One of the only games I've actually given up midway through. South Coast of the Continent, two more. South Coast of the Continent, two more. Oh no, those uh, those two I know. Uh, those are uh, getting their own special thing uh, along with these. Uh, okay, so now I need to go ahead and do kind of half size labels here. Yeah, no, okay. And 17. Since these are like sub-colonial era, like directly administered colonial era uh, areas for uh, this nation, we're just making sure that we've got them labeled as such. I never got into D&D &D as a kid, not because I wasn't into it. In fact, I loved it. It was just the fact that I had no friends to play with. Yeah, I had that as uh, when I was younger as well. Uh, I got past that by playing with people online uh, back when like that was still kind of a new thing. Uh, like, I got into role-playing games in general when I was uh, a, I don't know, oh, uh, when when was when was Dark Heresy released? Because that was my first role-playing game. That was the first role-playing game I played was the original Dark Heresy release. That would have been when I started playing role-playing games. Okay. I think we got everything. I'm just going to do another pass over to make sure I did. Don't think I missed any one of these. Oh, that one could work. Uh, and then that's just gonna be six. Uh, 
maybe make that. Full sized one. Okay, there we go. Put that in the center. Okay, all of these. Straight into the label section. Boom, there we go. All right, we're all labeled up. All ghillie the OCDs, uh, the OCD individual's favorite thing. We're all labeled up. Yep. <laughs> Got that all done. So now, now we get to world building, guys. This is this is the point of the whole damn thing. <laughs> Didn't expect it to take three streams. Uh, but I'm gonna admit I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna toot my own horn a little bit, guys. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna toot my own hor horn here. Uh, like I'm gonna take away the labels and the borders. I fucking love the look of this map. I'm gonna be honest. I think this is a really good looking map. Uh, and I really like it. So I'm very proud of this. Uh, and the fact that I uh this is the first one I've ever done. 100% um, like in program like free drawn in program no mapping program as a guide or anything like that this is just 100% with my own hands with a drawing tablet it makes me feel proud so yeah <laughs> so now we get to the actual labeling part of this. So we are going to number these and we're going to start uh, thinking up names for these nations. At least one of them needs to be named um, the Grand Duchy or something. Some sort of a duchy kind of an area. Because, mm. you know, there's nothing wrong with just being a duke. Yeah. Well, I already know the first one. Number one was the name of the nation that uh, is going to be where the main story line, like, uh, uh, kind of takes place in, uh, where, where the protagonist, or at least a few of the protagonists, uh, exist in. So this will be the fifth. Uh, oh, how did I how did I spell that? Was it? Uh, Uh, hold on, let me let me look that up. Just make sure I've got this consistent between my resources, because it's gonna annoy me if I don't. Let's go to locations. Fifth Algon Republic. So number one is the Fifth Algon Republic. Uh, and for reference, because we're doing world building here, um, so we should talk about that. And I should, uh, and part of this whole reason is I'm saying it out loud, so that I can get instantaneous critique and opinions by the individuals watching. Uh, and holy shit, there's 11 people watching this concurrently. <laughs> uh, which is a lot, uh, for only the third stream I've ever done, and this one wasn't even pre-scheduled, so awesome on you guys. Um, but my idea of this world, uh, and the Elgin Republic is, um... I always, like, historically, I always found the idea that, um, I, I remember there was an interesting take from one historian I liked, uh, he, he, he posited the idea, uh, 
uh, that the the rise of Napoleon was directly the result of his uh, of the actions by his enemies before he even became a thing. So like the uh, uh, the original coalitions that were against the French Republic, uh, were directly led to a strong central French emperor in Napoleon and caused them the problems. If the uh, various monarchies of, of uh, Europe had not gone against him, uh, or not gone against the French Republic as hard, there's a good chance that a, a Napoleon might not have ever come about. Um, so that's something that's been in my head, and I like the idea, and uh, somebody already said something. Uh, Ryan, you already said uh, there aren't as many empires as the French are. That's kind of the idea. I want this to kind of be a post-revolutionary France kind of idea. Is th I want I want Al Algon to be like a region, a multi-ethnic, a multi like, broad region. Kind of like Germany before, kind of like the German people before... Germany existed as a nation. Um, so it's very unstable. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Uh, lots of and, baguette jokes. Yeah, lo yeah, lots of baguette jokes. Um, but I wanted it to be like very unstable. So it's the fifth Algon Republic, but it's probably like in the entire history of this world. It's probably the, I don't know, maybe seventh or eighth Algon nation. Uh, and in the story... The Al this is the first time, like, the entire area of Algon has united under a singular uh, nation. And it's the powder keg. It's the thing that's lighting the powder keg of this, like, quasi-Europe area. Because all the nations around it are seeing... The basic I mean, if you look at it, that's a pretty strong area, like, like terrain-wise. And I know this is, like, a world map, so the detail's not good. Uh... But, like, you know, there's a nice big river valley in there with some hills that probably store coal and iron in there. It's got access to the interior sea for trade and the exterior sea for uh, ocean-going trade. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of like at a crossroads. It's got a... It's, it's a very strong area, so now that they're united, it's, uh, it's caused a lot of their former enemies or other monarchies uh, that are seeing, like, this republic exist to uh, go against them. Uh, but instead of it being like Napoleonic era technology, it's more of like a kind of early World War I, kind of 1910, 1920 kind of technological level. That's kind of the idea behind the Algon Republic. Uh, so yeah, Fifth Algon Republic. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to go it's through those. Fifth, but actually it's the 25th. Depending on who you ask, it's. Well, I'm thinking like it's. It, the, there, there have been times when there have been like two or three Algon nations, uh, and like uh, the this, Algon free people, and then like the Algon, the Algon uh, Empire, and the like, yeah, or, or like or just various different labels and stuff. So it's kind of like it's got. But this is the fifth Republic of Algon, and this is the one that's actually. This is the the strongest that it's been, and it's actually like a post. This is the one where people are like, oh, this is a post-revolutionary state. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it's that little... Turns out guillotines bowl. work. So it's kind of like a thing, uh, there. Uh, so yeah, now I need to figure out, uh, algae. Uh, funny, funny apocalypse. Algae. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Algon is the region, not the people. Uh, which I, I think that probably will mean something in like old elvish or old dwarvish or something like that. Um... That, that I can, like, post hoc rationalize into whatever I want it to be, because that it doesn't actually exist as a language. So, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> uh, but now I need to figure out a name for this nation that's kind of attached to them, uh, which is kind of like, you know, w what would happen if, like, Great Britain just collided with Europe. Uh, so I need to figure out what they would be, and I think they would be enemies. So it'd have to be some sort of kingdom. Are we talking like pre or post? Um, sorry, pre or post Anglo-Saxon purging? Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be directly correlatory to a uh, to England. Well, like whatever the 
uh, the like uh, Anglo-Saxons culture is in this sort of variance. Uh, are they still in charge of England, or has another invading party said, "Hey, we're in charge now because my my aunt is actually your your queen right now, therefore I will take over." Uh, I think it's more like a. Uh, I think it's it's more like a. Uh, uh, a homogenous, uh, somewhat homogenous national, uh, like identity, uh, for who's there. Um, so they've been established for a while. Um, with probably like the border region being disputed against Algon and uh, and whoever they are, uh, Pensilla, Andrinus. Pensella. Mm. Pensella. Kingdom of Pensella. Pensellan Kingdom. Mm, that could work. The theocracy of Pensella. I don't like. The, I don't. I don't mm, maybe not a theocracy. Because those don't actually last a lot. They're, they're not a very common form of government because they're very unstable. Um, I mean, hey, when you, when you say that God is in charge of your country, that tends to happen. Yeah. Uh, I will also bring up my usual favorite for naming nations is uh, is uh, the country and nation name generator from fantasynamegenerator.com. Uh, it's a damn good website, man. Eh, it gives me ideas. Uh, Pencilla might actually work as an idea. <laughs> uh... The nation of rum. Yeah, oh, I like this. Uh, we'll do the greater kingdom of Pensilla. The greater kingdom of Pensilla. Do that. And three. This is kind of like a. And this is more like a uh, like a Romania, or something like that. So let's see. Hello, Colin. Hello, welcome to the boringest stream ever. <laughs> where, Hello there, General. Where I try and come Schober. up with names for fictional countries. Hello, General Schober. I mean, there's worse things you could be doing. I, I spent ages doing this on streams myself, and it sucks sometimes because your brain just goes, I don't know what to name this thing. Yeah, yeah. Kingdom of Schober. Schober. Yes, we name we name everything after people in chat. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Someone jump in, just like, just like, I don't know, name something after, like, I don't know, uh, Gunslinger six five five and like oh well uh, well there's no city named Gunslinger fuck that for some reason. <laughs> uh uh hmm I had one I like this <laughs> little sniping is like name something after me no balls I'm like yeah she's about right. Are you looking for a kingdom this time? Or uh, well, uh, maybe an empire? Or maybe well, a... most na some nations might not necessarily have the actual form of government in the name. Mm. Uh, we now have a city named Benjamin Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the uh, city of Magnus actually works, to be fair. Yeah, it does. Uh, no, I'm calling that. Places I'm calling of backwater? Number... Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, correct. Uh, just keep breaking down. Um, no, I'm calling number three Folden. Or... Uh, or that's how I'm pronouncing it, but it probably it would be pronounced by the locals like Fjolden, Fjoldin. Uh but uh, it would be a monarchy, because um, you know a lot of nations in Europe were monarchies uh, towards the turn of the, you know, twentieth century, nineteen twenties or so. Yeah, Folden reminds me of Ferelden. Yeah, it's a good mm -hmm. one from Dragon Age. Ah, never played it. Yeah, Ferelden is like one of the... I think it's the place where you start off the first game in. And the second game in as well, actually. And the third game, now that I think about it, holy shit. Yeah, Ferelden <laughs> is actually a pretty busy place. Huh. Fuck. What do you know? Let's think here. Uh, I just think I've got to come up with... Uh, how many of these are there? 
Uh, I've got to come up with... Uh, what's the highest number we got to? I see 12. 51. I wow. got with 51... Names. So we have two. Names. All right, 49 to go. I, I have more than two. I've got more than two. I've got, I've got three. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fold in uh, number four is at the southern place. Uh, Rule the Waves 2 series? Uh, uh, if there's like um, like another major update, maybe. Uh, if they finally add in like missile technology so that like the post World War II or the post like World War II time period actually has some technological growth, I'll do it. Uh, I don't like the fact that it, like missiles are really half-assed. Gandochi as Shober doesn't sound doesn't even sound bad. Yeah, it doesn't. Could be like the family of Shober is the uh, the ruling dy dynasty. Mm -hmm. It's vaguely Germanic as well, so it kind of work. I'm gonna call number. I think four is gonna be a principality. Go the principality. The principality of Saints could be run by a, a royal family of Azmirs or something. Or oh, that would be an oxymoron because the principality is an actual uh, form of government. Yep. But hey, they don't particularly know that, do they? <laughs> uh, hmm. Principality is going to be principality of or the blankety blank principality. Uh, the Shamir Principality? Hmm. Gonna be Thalcus. Principality loves sniping. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Could do Thalcus Principality. Yeah, the Falcus Principality. I like that, yeah. Okay, number five is a big is a big boy. So yeah, that one's a big boy. We gotta figure out what he's called. Uh, hmm. Let's think on this. Maybe Gal. Is the Galanar's Ga reach? I was thinking Galbian Federation. Yeah, that works. A federation of smaller city states or something in there. Yeah, now six is like the direct analog of uh, of Great Britain. Um, could be a small Britain. Call it small Britain. <laughs> small Britain. Small bit. Make it a uh, make it a halfling place. It's full small, of small people. Small bit. Um, no. Uh, well, Colin, I don't like. I kind of just. I'm not being a dick. I don't usually take requests for games and stuff. Like I did have recently, like a uh, a vote. Uh, of like what series I was gonna do next, and that's why I'm doing Kingmaker. Um, cause it won. Uh, by a uh, coin toss, <laughs> actually. Um, and yeah, I don't, I wouldn't really do like a 1920 start, uh, because I like having more control over my, uh, stuff. Uh, so I like playing the full breadth of a game when I go in. So, 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 you know, it's just, 
If he has a major update, I'll probably go ahead and do Rule the Waves 2 again, because I like Rule the Waves. Uh, and I mean, hell, they gave me a code for it, so... You know, I, I'm, I'm at least, I guess, somewhat of a draw for the game that they decided I was worth that. Um, so I'd like... Here, take this. Yeah, so I'd definitely love to uh, keep playing it. It's just I get bored very easily. Um... Uh, a random cat guy. Um, <laughs> uh, the red area. A random cat empire. Yeah, a random cat. Uh, the red area is a disputed territory from between nation thirteen and fifteen, uh, who have don't have names yet. Um, I wanted it to be like the equivalent of like, like Kashmir in our like world, or uh, like uh, are the oh what is it the Halib triangle, um in modern day uh so it's like an area of of importance that both claim but uh nobody's willing to back either one's claim so it's kind of just like a disputed territory uh and i thought like you know it's right on the edge of like a, a major hill there's a couple of rivers that go down there there's probably like some sort of like uh, deposits of I don't know deposits of uh, an, of iron of, or yeah. or maybe a magical resource or something like that in this world. Could Just, be cold iron in those hills. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But either way, it's uh it's kind of like a disputed area. Uh, I like that as uh, as a way to break up the map a little bit and to kind of create some tension, uh, kind of away from uh, so it just creates some tension in the map. I thought it was I thought it was interesting. So also I liked how it turned out. It gave some extra color. Uh, so we got the uh, the Galbian Federation, uh, and then six for this uh, island nation. This is I, I don't know what you guys were expecting when you joined in here, but uh, this is it. <laughs> I'm naming this things the for the next three of hours. Of the meme. There is no other memes here. This <laughs> is it. I'm, I'm naming things for the next three hours. Uh, I don't even know how many Maybe people are watching four, right depending now. Depending on how I don't have my stats on though. anymore. <laughs> I did lose quite Maybe a bit. Maybe four. We, we we might go four hours depending on how uh, how crazy Roach is. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, we are trying to figure out a name for this island nation. We're number six. Um, six. Prosperous is just named after, I don't know, something, maybe the, uh, the local lord was like, "We'll name this place Pot Prosperous because it's, you know, we've we've been living here for very long, and mm. it's been very prosperous." I don't know. People can get lazy like that. Also, when you when you're like a king, people don't tend to say no. So. The. Oh, actually, that did give me an idea, Taylor. You're a. Uh... Your suggestions of of, of jokes uh, actually just gave me an idea. I could do uh, the uh, the Umbra Isles. Yeah, it works. The Umbra Isles, or the Umbra Isle, because there's only one of them, right? Yeah. Oh fuck, Isle. That's uh, why am I why am I blanking on that? Uh, uh, I S L E. Yeah, the Umbra Isle. Okay, now seven. Seven's like a border region here. Um, Well, the United Cities of Blank, Colin, might actually go well for uh, for uh, Label 12, because that's a, like a, a big chunk of different um, of different nations there, so that might work better there. Um, so seven's going to be a... Hmm. Uh, this is always the hardest part about world building, is thinking of names. Um, oh, he's, he's got to think of names, and you're always trying to keep it like um, the Republic because it's a big old trading 
center because it's in the middle of everything. It has the largest chunk of the coastline, I want to say, and the, in the on the interior sea. It's a republic of some nature. Hmm. Possibly. But I have in my head that uh, that they would be hostile towards Algon, and they wouldn't necessarily have a reason to be hostile towards a, a revolutionary state that just gained uh, republic status, or just formed a republic, if they were already a republic. Uh, that's true. Could be a pirate state, maybe? Not that close to, like, civilization. Could be... It would be more... It would be more like a, uh... uh it, it would actually be more like in Italy uh, than the actual, like, peninsula uh, that mm. looks like Italy because it's, uh, it's centrally located in this, like, Mediterranean-esque central uh, sea um, and everything, so... Oh, there we go. How about Altrian? Kingdom of Altria. Yeah, Kingdom of Altria. I like that. Has a nice ring to it. Yeah. That's because it's a. Uh, it just it was based off of the uh, the primary opponents of the Roman city state uh, to the north of Rome, uh, which was uh, Atria. I added an L, <laughs> so it it kind of works with that idea. Uh, well, one good one good thing because uh, uh, I apparently this is like a quasi tutorial series uh, in these streams, even though I gloss over a lot of the busy work uh, in between streams here. Um, one of the one of the things you got to keep in mind if you're doing world building or if you're uh, trying to make a setting for basically anything. This is for a novel, but it could be for a D and D game or anything like that. Is to try and keep it simple. Um, like uh, uh, some people have a tendency to like just like mash consonants and vowels together to form names, and it doesn't it doesn't really work. Uh, it doesn't work all the time because sometimes you can mash something together and be like. I I would pronounce that, and then three days later, you're like, "How do I pronounce that?" Well, it's because like some people uh, see like uh, uh, like J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, like names for things in like the Lord of the Rings, and they're very complex and stuff. But Tolkien kind of got away with it because he also like made a language uh, yeah. that kind of worked with it, so he had a reason. Uh, whereas most of the time, we're not going that deep. So you kind of need something that can flow out of the tongue, like out of your tongue of your native language, uh, like easy enough um, that sounds plausible. So try not to be too complex. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm basically meshing together a lot of fairly common English sounds uh, because it'll be written in English. Uh, if I want something to be at like, least then when your players are looking at it or your people are reading it, they can go. Oh, that's easy enough to pronounce, or easy enough to read. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, eight, 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 eight. I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm Oss. Mm. Oss. Pseudo Dragon Republic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Draconic Republics are probably a thing. Yeah, but they probably wouldn't be. How many? How many like nations on Earth are are the Humanic Republic of of the? I mean, you know, listen. Obviously, yes. If there some is no dude other... can name him, if some dude can name a place the Kingdom of Dave, some place can name somewhere the Humanic Republic. All right, let's not go there. And I'm not talking about the, the Jewish kingdom, I'm talking about the Fallout 3 quest. 
Anyway. Uh, that could be... I'm trying to think of a second a second sound to it. So it's a double syllable. I like os because it uh, it's reminiscent of Austria. Uh, and it kind of works as it's bordering a... Uh, it's bordering like a you know Holy Roman Empire kind of nation and uh, like Italy. Does it? Does it sound bad in, in Swedish? What does it mean in Swedish? Yeah, yeah, that it, it is really bad. Uh, oddball. It's <laughs> Quickly plays a Dave Hive Mind and Solaris. I, uh, it's a good time. I used a lot of when I when it came to like labeling stuff in uh, in Arma, I just kind of used what was there. Uh, but for the Halo one, I actually made like a solar system, uh, and I think I used like I don't remember what it was. I think I used Czech as the basis for the names of everything. So I think like I think the the name for the world was like Blue Marble or something like that, uh, and it was. Uh, and it was in Czech, uh, because I thought that was that was interesting. Um, like I put a lot of effort to that Halo campaign. It was just s such a shame that that Halo campaign was so buggy and poorly planned out on in the on ground level. <laughs> what Osper? Osper. Os Osper. Or Asperia. 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 It's a, it's a bit of a redundant... Or it's a bit of a... It kind of... The ugly that. Oh, is that what... that <laughs> Fulden would be that ugly that? Eh. It's bound to happen eventually when you just kind of mess with it. Sooner or later, words. you will yeah. end up giving something a name that's a little bit like... Oh, that's a, that's a weird one. <laughs> Yeah, because I can't. I ran into that because apparently uh, the slang term for like a for like a uh, uh, for like slut, I think it is in like uh, or I forget what it, what it was specifically. Um, uh, sounded very similar to the label I gave to like day in my calendar for Sleeping Giants, because it's because in a day in because uh, basically in Sleeping Giants it's like uh, the the secondary thing uh, like it's based off I think uh, uh, dwarvish. And I thought, like, in Dwarvish, I based that off of, like, uh, uh, like um, Nordic languages. And uh, one of the uh, very, like, I forget which specific one. I think it was Norwegian. Uh, but one of the things you can use is Slag. So it's S-L-A-G. Um, but that, in English, if you're not p pronouncing it, like, Norwegian, it's Slag. And that has a... A bad connotation. That's a, that's, a, uh, that's a British Isles word for woman of the night. Yeah. Or a very yeah. So I had to, uh, we had to work through that with uh, when I was presenting that. <laughs> uh, I like the os idea. So os. But I don't want to do because the first thing my my mouth wants to do is like osbeck, but that sounds like that's existing. That's in existence. What about using the Osper order, putting uh, Os and Per, and then it's an order. Maybe it's a, uh, since it's on the border with 13, I don't know what you've decided 13 might be yet, but if 13 is like an, an old enemy or maybe a religious, uh, there's going to be a religious decency there, 8 could have been a religious order that sort of formed up there and sort of, uh, they... They take orders from the uh, uh, from the uh, from the Republic now because their Grandmaster is like, yeah, we we work for you guys now. You seem cool. Could be that. Maybe. Well, Os means East, but that doesn't necessarily work in this world. I'm gonna say. The Osperdi. Maybe Osperdi. Hmm. Trying to think of Kingdom of Osperdi. I'm 
I'm gonna go with uh, Kingdom of the Asperdi, and the Asperdi could be like a like a cultural group. Yeah, that works. Because like 1910s, 1920s area, there was still pretty like blatant ethno states that existed, so that would that would uh, be totally fine. I'd actually like to see that map oddball. Uh, I mean, I could kind of see where some of the maps would mesh in together, but that was always the problem with Arma is that once you get to a point and you like, it always fe you, it always feels hard to kind of like shake things up in Arma maps because at a certain point you kind of know what you're doing uh, and you kind of figure out a way of making them feel different. Uh, it's, uh, for the smaller ones, obviously with like Altus, you have just so much to work with. It doesn't really, it doesn't really, I mean, it can still get kind of boring because they're all very similar. Uh, so nine, I'm going to go with, uh, hmm. Kingdom of the Asperdi, or I could go, uh, Asperdi Kingdom. Asperdi could be my Kingdom of the Asperdi or Asperdi Kingdom. I like the Kingdom of the Asperdi. Yeah, it sounds like they're uh, they're a little bit more um, full of themselves. Military, yeah, a little bit more maybe uh, military, uh, mi militarily driven, and also maybe a little bit dick, you know, a little bit dick. You know, there's a there's a lot of assholes. Yeah. yeah. It's just some boxes with names and lines drawn together. You're literally just like that dude, uh, Charlie, in the <laughs> office. Just like this is my map. And there's like six walls of your Pepe room that's just filled. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, the joke uh, that a lot of people don't get is the fact that uh, Charlie is uh, illiterate. Uh, and so Pepe Sylvia is actually just Pennsylvania. <laughs> Pepe hands. And given the fact that they're, they live in the state of Pennsylvania, that's why he's getting all, all he's Pepe Sylvia. He just posted Sylvia. it in general, Roach. <laughs> Oh, I did. I mean, hey, that's it. That's that works. That works as a map, you know. That works as a hey, cool yeah, map. that works. Like, look at our map. Yeah. Sometimes you don't need anything like overly fancy. You just need it to work. Yeah. <laughs> All these distractions making it harder uh, to get this going. Uh, so the net, the one next to the to the kingdom of the Asperdi. Um, trying to think see that's the other thing is that your brain automatically goes to when you're trying to label things and you're trying to name things kind of uh your brain automatically goes to familiar territory but that can create a problem in the fact that you it'll sound too similar to things that already exist so i've had to create i've had to be like oh there's a name and then i remember that's from the um the stuff i've been doing with yeah. mage's world and i'm like oh fuck and it's not a problem when you're not like live streaming a game or planning on writing a book uh, based off of it. Uh, like for home games and like stuff like that uh, or personal like, you know, fan fictions or the equivalent of like, you know, short stories Like when, it, when it's literally like you're not going to make any money off of it and it's just for fun, there's no real issue there. Oh, yeah, there's no real issue, but you got to be careful whenever you're making this for personal gain or at least the potential for personal gain. I have no... I... I have no, uh, I, I don't, I don't expect I'll make any money off of a book if, uh, if and when this is finished. <laughs> well, we can hope. Uh, fucking, what is nine going to be? The Asperdi, Kingdom of the Asperdi. So they border, Kingdom of the Asperdi border. Um, what do they border? How about the Cravel? Cravel. I got an I in my like I'm in my mouth. I'm thinking I uh, as a start. Like maybe. Maybe the Evenin, Evenin kingdoms, or the Evenin. Maybe just Evenin. Evenin dynasty. No, nah, because dynasties. No, nah, because that would. 
it's a bit too for for what the uh, for what this is. I'm thinking the Venon is like a just a regional name, it's like a region. Mm -hmm. Like you know how like Prussia is just land of the Prus. Um, That's true. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it'd be Venon. So that'd be even. Uh, that works grammatically, right? I V E N A N, Evenin. Yeah, Evenin. Yep. Yeah. We'll say Evenin. Okay, ten. Who the fuck's ten at? There it is. I should know. I made this map. Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Listen, right. I wasn't gonna say anything other than giggle at you. Yeah. That was my shoulder popping, if you were wondering what that awful noise was, because my body hates me. Oh, I barely heard it. I mean, if, if I try and actively not pop joints on the stream, because I, I well, I, Rival and, and Red's not here, uh, but I, they hate it. Um. <laughs> well, no, that was just me, like, moving and stretching, and my shoulder was like, oh, you're making me do things. Oh, no, I got, like, a pressure in my neck right now that, you know, it's like, I can just do, there we go. I don't know if that picked it up, but I just had a... Oh, it did, yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Everybody in chat just leaves, like, ah, oh, fuck that, no. <laughs> uh, so 10. I'm okay with them being, like, a... A Coria? A Corian... I don't know. A Coria sounds pretty good to me. A Coria something. Mm. Or it could just be a Coria. A Coria works, too. thinking I don't want to latch onto the first thing I want to I want something that kind of like works in my head total, total Republic total dynasty total kingdom Thinking maybe I don't know. I got I got a T in my mouth right now. I'm thinking T for something. Uh, Pacquiao? Think... No, not in TH because THs are overdone. I'm thinking TI, TI maybe 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 Tarland. Tierland, I'm thinking Tierland. That sounds really close to Ireland. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. Tierland, to Ireland. Turland, but I mean, hey, listen. If you want to make that the area that has all the all the Fey races, that's where the the centers and the Fey and Fey and all that sort of stuff is from. Bay. That'd be cool. Maybe maybe the maybe the bays. Maybe maybe the bay is is as Tierland Bay. Yeah, and, and the Tierlands is, Bay or the the bays of Tierland. Bays of Tierland. So this would be just the this would just be called like the Tierlands. Maybe Mel. No, maybe it's maybe it's pl pluralized. So it's the Tierlands. And that's like, yeah. That's its, that's its nation. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. So tier. Does that uh, island off the coast count as the Tierlands as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking we go with that. So I'm thinking T I R L I N D S Tierlands. Yeah, that works. Yeah. I like how Colonel's uh, Colonel Abal status in Discord is in quarantine again. <laughs> It does actually look a lot like Estonia. You're correct. Yeah, it does. Now you mention it. I was well. The, the thing in my head is that I want like uh, I want a nation. Uh, I want the nations that are uh, like to the right of that to be like beginning to be kind of uh, Slavic themed in terms of naming at least because they're supposed to be like a Russia esque nations. Um, so I thought like I was starting to think like either like Baltic or like uh, Scandinavian kind of names, and the first thing that popped in my head was Finland. Cause, and then I was thinking, okay, well, let's try and like work through that. And then T came through my uh, came through there, Tierland. Uh, so we got that. Um, so now we've got eleven, which is way down here.
maybe uh, brew. Maybe brew die republic. Thinking that the people's republic of brew die. It's actually uh, communist here. It would be it would be a bit too early for communism to kind of sprout up. Uh, at least in that, so I'm thinking, thinking of Die Republic. It's been a little bit of liberalization as we go through here. Um, and then listen, sooner or later, they will listen to the guillotines. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got that. Uh, and then 12 is this big amalgam, so I'm thinking... Uh, United Cities of... I think that's what, uh, what's it called? Maybe. Well, I was thinking, I like that, but we could also do, like, um. Yeah, I was calling, he was like the United Cities of something. Uh. Kind of. Independent cities of the Upper Peninsula. But they're not independent, though, really. They're still in the Gallian Republic. This would be maybe United. The United Nations. Of the the United Nations of the I'm thinking maybe maybe Thrick. United Cities of the Thrick. The Thrick could be the populist group that they uh... that they have there. Yeah, that could work. Okay, we'll work with that until we get something better. All these are subject to change. Uh, <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> 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 an interesting an interesting uh, situation Oddball I actually uh, funny thing Oddball speaking of Stellaris I actually uh, uh, finished up and uh, sent in the application uh, for because uh, uh, if you don't know who it is but uh, the uh, uh Templin Institute on YouTube is uh, starting up season two of their Stellaris series um, of their Stellaris Invicta series where they kind of like run through like a game and they, they have like really detailed breakdowns and history and stuff like that um, and during the first and basically they take in like community made races that will appear in the game. And I missed the first round through, but I, I finally finished and also joined their Patreon, so I got an early application in. Uh, so the uh, there's the possibility that the Roachkin Quarantine Administration uh, will make an appearance in that series. <laughs> are you a, uh, a militaristic spiritualist who are also authoritarian? No, uh, militaristic materialists. I see. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, it's it, it's the race it's the first race I ever made in Stellaris, back before it even released dur during the during the uh, the beta build that I got. Uh, so that was the, that's the first series I ever did as well was the Rochkin Quarantine Administration. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. 
And they've only gotten more detailed as time has gone on. Grand Kingdom and the Captain Plains. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. We can we could do we could do Kaflin the Kaflin Empire. Yeah, that works. Okay, now we go down to this large boy. Takes up half of more than half of this uh, long, uh, craggy peninsula, and even some like lowlands area on the continent. It's like the equivalent of, uh, in my mind, this is like the equivalent of Sweden. All right, I'm gonna think on that. I'm gonna go take a bio break and get a bottle of water. And I'm gonna keep thinking while I get up. So, entertain people, Mikey. Damn it! Don't make me do it. God damn it, Roach! No, don't leave me. <laughs> damn it, he's gone. Damn it! No. Uh, Katarina? I like that. Um, cat guy. That's actually pretty good. That could be like uh, maybe that's the section in the map where there's all that um, the red area in the map. What would that be, Gitterak? Oh, hey George, um, I am subbing in for Roach right now because he has gone on a bio break. So if you're wondering why there is an Irish guy talking on the microphone right now, it's because Roach is currently thinking about things while getting water and stuff. Um, someone say revolution uh yeah maybe maybe uh maybe i will who knows uh you guys have fun over there in the states you know try not to try not to die uh how would you pronounce that uh zorb kingdom of schrober <laughs> sooner or later you're going to get something named after you schrober if you keep saying it roach will lose his mind and go yeah there's this little island nation out in the middle of nowhere called the kingdom of schrober it's in the Bermuda Triangle, though, so no one's ever been there, and no one will ever be there. You get her, Ike? Oh, I, know, I like right. that. Yeah, you're back. I don't entertain people anymore, thank I God. I am back. I'm not here to entertain people, Roach. I'm here to drop memes and leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, we get any decent suggestions? Uh, we got Gatterike, and we got uh, Karina, and the Grand Kingdom of the Crafton Plains. I like those three. Those are pretty good. We already use uh, we already use Kaflin, um, for the Kaflin Empire. Uh, uh, so Katarina and Gatterike are the two that I quite like. Uh, Schober is trying to get you to name a place after him. I keep saying he will. You will eventually name something after him. But it will be an island in the in this world's Bermuda Triangle, and no one will ever see it or know of it. <laughs> see, I have to avoid that kind of stuff because uh, because if I am planning on writing, this is for a book, which means like copyright and stuff will be a, will be a thing. So I can't like I have to be very careful about that. Uh, for like like rights and uh, royalties and stuff. <sighs> that happens. Yeah. You gotta try not to be, you know, moderately legal. You know, you gotta you gotta try and be publishable, I guess. Make your editors do as little work as possible. Because editing sucks. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's the, uh, maybe you should name it after your phone's ringtone. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, I should probably restart my computer in a bit because I've been playing XCOM Chimera Squad for the last few hours, even though it crashed like three and a half hours ago. God damn it. Hmm. High fantasy? That's a good question. Is it high fantasy roach or are we talking? Uh, I mean, I've got a magic system in place that I, I like. I, I don't know where it would necessarily work on the because it's it's a post like the world's post industrial revolution so well will the wizards be able to create demi planes and be like here is me I'm turning not thinking, this like into my gold. idea is that is that instead of it being like a um like D, &D thing where like you can just kind of call upon a certain amount of magic per day and stuff I, I have the idea of that um that certain individuals can channel uh mana uh more easily than others uh but standard like classical magic used a lot of chanting and like rituals and stuff to to concentrate like the general mana which permeates existence uh so that they could manifest things so like you know you could you could create a lightning bolt, but it would take you a little bit to kind of like get it together, and uh, and you can maybe concentrate for a while and hold that, but you'd have to release it at some point. Um, but like, uh, there would be a magic power tech, like a magical car. But or there a magic would be nuke. a recent, mm -hmm. uh, not maybe not recent, but there would be a like a newer style magic is based off of uh, the idea of of pre-concentrating that mana into like a crystalline form so you have like mana crystals that have a charge to them and so so like modern mages would be able to like you know cast a spell to 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 attack maybe they or, have to like or fly crush but it's the crystal i mean not, like, i don't think crush yeah. i think actually like in my head crushing a crystal would like Eat instantaneously release like all of its energy so it'd be like that would be dangerous I'm thinking, like, it would just use up power within a crystal, and, like, mana crystals are somewhat naturally forming in areas, but most of the ones you that are used smoke are artificial. Like, a like, like, very artificial and created and stuff, so th I'm thinking, like, it's mana a point. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh... You know what? I'll, I'll, uh, I like that. That's like that's a nice little. Uh, that's a nice little historical. Uh, like Influence. a nice little, uh, like nice little historical background that would be fun for people. Very ritual based, and uh, that's probably one way to put it. Yeah, like gen like classically, yeah, it would be like very ritual based, but like modern mages would be able to to use these crystals to instantaneously cast spells. Um, I imagine there's a lot of people who get paid a lot of money to make those crystals. Yeah, I was think, yeah, I think it's a very it's very uh high intensity workload. And that, that could and also, be what's in the uh what's in the red section of the map. There could be a giant uh, deposit of those crystals somewhere in that area. Could be. Uh that that's a possibility. Um And we're going to have a uh, a double meaning there because if it's uh, if it's Gitterreich, which is domain of the gates or the Geats, uh, that technically is uh, is domain of the gates domain because kingdom is a domain, uh, which very much works with like a lot of actual names because the river Avalon actually just means uh, river of river, <laughs> and this and the Sahara Desert is just desert desert. I mean, hey, listen. There's plenty of places that are named this thing of that thing, or this yeah, thing of the same. But there's thing. A, there's a lot of it. It, it definitely has a, like a history of like uh, of uh, of uh, like people coming in and like figuring out a name and then just reusing that name and then it kind of just translates and now it no longer means the same thing. So they put the moniker on it, even though the word that they're using means the moniker that they put at the end of it. So there's a there's a lot. If you look up, there's a lot of labels that are that if you translate them to the base language that the label originally came from uh it just comes out to like river river or hills of hills or mountain mountain um there's a, like a, i think there's there's one that's just a big mountain of mountain uh stuff like that uh and, and los angeles city is city of the angels city like 
Listen, right? Los Angeles can be called what it wants to be called because nobody can tell it otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of those in history, so... Kind of, I guess you could kind of say that, uh, George. It's just like, it's a... It's like... Like, the idea behind it is that magic is uh, is limited to individuals that have a natural tendency to be able to channel naturally occurring mana. And so, like, naturally occurring mana is in, like, individuals, like, can... Because uh, mana is, like, uh, like, a binding force in the universe of this world. So, like, all land and life and the ground and the, all that has... Uh... uh just has uh, uh, mana permeating it, and certain individuals can channel it. Uh, and like so, a like, ley line sort of thing. Kind of, yeah, but it's like naturally occurring everywhere. Um, and so the idea behind magic was to find ways to channel and concentrate it because it's so permeated that it's basically useless as a, as a force until you can kind of bring it together. Uh, for for use, and so that's what the world, that's what the magic is in this world supposed to be. And the crystals are basically just pre-concentrated mana, pre-concentrated stuff. So yeah, um, that's that's the idea at least behind there. Uh, here's fifteen. It was just behind the uh, the text document. I only have two window. I only have two screens, which. The fact that I, I that that is limiting Mitch, me is give much. Roach, give Roach like two of your screens. You already have seven of them. You don't need that many. I could use another one actually. <laughs> I could. I've I've been thinking about getting a third one so that I'll have like chat and stuff like on a, on my third screen, like above my two screens. So I have like a try setup, kind of like how Midge oh, has. Yeah. I'm thinking of mounting a a monitor to my wall, and then having two of them on my desk, and have the one on the wall be like the uh, the chat and stuff. Yeah. We can. We can. Nah, Mongil's too on the nose. Uh, yeah, that happens a lot, Zorb. That happen. That happens a lot. Uh, just with the, through naturally kind of occurring processes of people living in an area for so long. Of things being named after things, but then those new uh, those things being named after the original thing, and it just kind of just goes right around. Cruel oil and gas fields. Oh no, that's uh, this place is Texas. Welcome to Texas. Mm. What about the plains of Zohar? I don't know if you're. Yeah, I don't know if they're actually planes or not, but it's not really you know. planes. It's more like. Well, I mean, it kind of is. It's just it's a, it's a lot of territory. Um, I mean, yeah, that's that's the whole point of this is that we're we're coming up with country names right now, uh, George. We're filling. We have out. another what you said fifty one. So there's another so thirty six. Thirty six names that we put down. Um, Some of them will be easy because some of them will be colonies of these some of these nations, so that they'll they'll be like uh, regional, like, uh, like new blank or whatever. Yeah, like that. something like that. Uh, so that won't be a huge deal. Um, also, I have to come up with like a name for the three continents at some point. Uh, The Grand Kingdom of Teaks. I actually do like the the phrase the Grand Kingdom because it's a big area. It's not just a. I was thinking grand, grand. I was thinking Grand Empire of. Uh, grand Empire because I like uh, I like thirteen and fifteen are like competing imperial thrones, for mm -hmm. 
so I, I, I like that as an idea. So like grand grand empire of blank. Um, grand empire of uh, I don't like I'm not getting like too detailed into like resources wise George right now I'm just getting into the names um, so I'm thinking like grand empire of I don't know why T's in my like I got a like T on the tip of my tongue so I'm thinking Grand Empire, but I've had a lot of T's. That could be a base word, because, I don't know, that could be a base sound in their proto-language. So, Grand Empire of Thrall. Thra, thra, thrall. The, the Thleen. Grand Empire Thleen. of Trukovich? Thleen. Because you said Russian allegory. Trukovich. Or Trukovia. Grand Empire of Trukovia. Maybe Thrusian? Maybe like, uh... Thru Grand Thru uh, Thrusian Empire, yeah. Grand Empire of Thrusia. Or Thusia. Cut the T out. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Alright, 16. The fuck 16 at? There it is. Alright, 16. 16 is the one at the very end of the peninsula. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Got to think here. Actively being invaded and colonized by Nation 17. I wanted to hearken to, like, China in a way. Maybe not directly on the nose, like, Asian inspired naming, but I'm thinking something mandate. Thing in the the Aria Mandate? Um, no, I was I, I I came up with some maybe the uh, the Altuvan, maybe the Altuvan Mandate. Why does Altuvan rings a name from somewhere? I don't know why though. I don't know. I could. Uh... Nah, it could be anything. I play so many different fantasy games. It could literally just be some I can throwaway look it thing. Up. Let's see if this comes up with anything. Uh, nothing pops up. There's a couple of German go go entries there. here, but that doesn't look like anything I can see. Let's so cut that. Well, I'm going with Mandate, Colin, because I want it to hearken kind of to China. Uh, Dynasty's a little on the nose, but uh, there was a there was an idea that the the Chinese emperor for a time had a mandate from heaven uh, to rule. Um, yeah, that was sort of the thing in China for a very long time. Is that yeah. uh, 
which is the why they were so was... much. There was so much uh, uh, destabilizing. It would break apart very easily because when things got really bad, the idea was that the imperial, that the empire, or that the emperor no longer had the mandate of heaven. And that it had to be but the empire had lost the favor of, of, of the, the gods deities or, or the that heaven had, or that granted them that, yeah. yeah so that was kind of the thing so i'm going with mandate just because that kind of like harkens to that but it's not super on the nose um it could also be a three kingdoms-esque story in this place but that's just something in the future because i love the three kingdom story yeah so that could that could work now 17 is a bit on the nose i wanted something it's kind of harkens to like an imperial japan or like a or like a very or a very expansionist island nation. Um, so as you can see on the map, seventeen has not only their home island chain, but they've also started uh, to take over like coastal regions uh, on the on like former Altuvan land, and also these other areas that uh, that border. What about them. Olmian? Olmian Principality, Olmian Empire, the Commonwealth of Olmia. Everything changed when Island 17 attacked. <laughs> Thank you, Oddball. <laughs> Oddball, you earn yourself a thumbs up for that. You earn yourself your Sergeant Stripe every day in my regiment. <laughs> Mostly because you're a great memer. <laughs> Uh, Mitar, maybe? Mitar and Empire could work. The Empire of Mitar. So I think that'd be... Midaran. That'd be the that'd be pronounced Midaran. We can go with that. Midaran Mitaran Empire. They control a fairly hefty portion of the world. Or at least a hefty portion of like this area. And we go all the way down here to 18, back this way, which shares the peninsula with the uh, uh, the Gedereich Kingdom. I, think, I guess it's that would... separate, entirely not uh, affiliated with Number 14, though, right? It's not affiliated at all with the Gedereich Kingdom. No, I'm thinking like it's a, it's kind of like a like a Norway, Sweden kind of kind of deal. Don't say that. There's going to be a giant argument in the chat now about which is better. <laughs> not in my, not in my, uh, my community as much. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh yeah. Will there be any countries in Civil Wars that both have the same name but different titles? Uh, not at the current start of the, uh, of the book. Uh, cause my idea behind the book I don't, again, I don't know who was here whenever I said it. Um, uh, the idea is that is that number is nation one here. The uh, the Al uh, wow, I've already already blanked. It's been a while since I slept. Uh, the Algon, the fifth Algon Republic is like a recently formed uh, nation uh, from a previous like imperial uh, nation. Uh, so it's been like a post-revolutionary France kind of idea. And the idea behind it is that, um, is that because of that, Algon is now a target of a lot of various uh, old monarchies around them, uh, and it's like a story of uh, of an emergent nation, uh, like a post-revolutionary emergent nation in this like fantasy world, uh, because there was a 
the idea was it was an interesting historical idea I, I heard from one person say the fact that uh, one of the one of the main reasons that Napoleon ever came about was the fact that the old monarchies of of Europe uh, were so uh, were so afraid of the revolution spreading that they basically created an even worse problem in the form of the uh, the imperial uh, France under Napoleon because Napoleon only came about because he had so many military campaigns he fought during post revolutionary. Uh, France, like era, so it's kind of it's kind of like that. So, uh, George number twelve is a uh, United City State Nation, so it's it's very it's, it's a group of very small uh, uh, not kingdoms, very small city states that are sort of banded together underneath the flag or yeah. underneath the. It's like a post. It's like a post fall Rome, but like all of the cities like broke apart, and it's kind of like a it's quasi like Holy Roman Empire kind of thing. Um, so this is like the cradle of the civilization here, but it's like broken apart after, uh, like maybe you know hundreds of years ago. It's kind of like yeah, kind of like Greece, kind of like Greece or a or a Holy Roman Empire or a, uh, that kind of thing. So that's it's kind of a mix. So Twelve is just a whole bunch of small city states and that control things. Uh, so yeah, eighteen. Thinking. Thinking Shelvik. Kingdom of Shelvik. So oh, uh, the Shelvik United Province? Uh, no, I'm thinking just Kingdom of Shelvik. I think that's uh, that's Excuse good me? enough. It's kind of kind of works. So now we're on 19, and I don't remember where 19 is. You designed this map, Roach. God damn it. I know. I know. Where the fuck's 18? Oh, it's the island nation. Here we go. So this basically controls the main island and these smaller ones a part of here. I'm thinking. I mean, keep in mind, guys, the si the scale of this, because actually it'll match up pretty well. Uh, like that's Australia compared to this uh, this island. Uh, not uh, it's not a small island. And also, I think did we go through all of? Yeah, we went through all of surviving Mars's OST. <laughs> Damn. Uh, God damn. Let's see. What other... Alright, we'll do the uh, Surviving Mars official Mars Radio. Put that on. Uh, but yeah, that's that's Australia compared to this island, so it's not a small thing uh, here. Let's go ahead and let's think about this. I'm thinking it's got to sound different because it's a it's fairly far away from the rest of the uh, the nation, so it probably wouldn't be as influenced in terms of naming schemes. And it's large enough that it would have a fairly robust native population to. Uh, 
to maintain a national identity. So it's got. I gotta think of something that sounds. What about uh, mm -hmm. it as an ET? So, it. Uh... What about the diocese of Ita? I'm thinking I will go with dynasty here. Maybe the the uh... maybe the. Itian dynasty. Kind of this far off island nation. Itian dynasty. Yeah, I'm like I like that. Itian dynasty. Okay, twenty. What the fuck's twenty at? Twenty twenty twenty. Over here, there we go. Okay, now I gotta work out the uh, colonial states. Well, the problem with colonial states is that they're often named after cities. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking twenty would be because I want one of these to be a break-off state, like a breakaway that gained independence. They were like, "Hey, fuck you!" Yeah, I want this them is our be, land now. I want them to be a breakaway, so we're kind of, so I'm trying to work out which one would be what, and then. The rest would be like colonial holdings from states from uh, this Europe area. I don't think Algon would have any colonial holdings. I think it, I think it would have been too focused on internal strife to really push for colonialization. I'm thinking 21 will be the breakaway. I think it's small enough that it could kind of work, and I think it, it's reminiscent of a, of a like a, a proto or early United States, because it's all coastal, like on the you know like on the eastern side of the of the Appalachian Mountains. So it kind of works. So I'll have 21 be the breakaway state, and 20 is gonna. 20 is a big state. This is a big controlled area. So who do we want to give that power to? In the Europe area. Could belong to number 10. Could belong to the bays. So they 10? are closest. Ten could work. Six could work as well. Yeah. Basically, a nation that has a very large or that has a has a reason for a robust shipping or naval tradition, and I already have well, six ten... having this uh, island, like these this island, all the way out here. So six. Oh yeah. Six by that virtue would have a naval tradition. Yeah, and ten I'm assuming has been stuck on that peninsula for ages. Like that's been sort of where they've been for. A very very long time so they would have naval tradition or they would be stuck there and wouldn't be much use to anyone doesn't necessarily mean that because they could be going ahead and like they could have like limited naval tradition where they're trading along the coast instead yeah. of going out but um, i would say at some point when they were like oh look there's a big old continent over here we could settle instead of being I mean, that's stuck still here. a pretty far yeah. distance that's not again scale wise this is like the distance it's between closer though like the distance between their furthest reaches island to the like this like uh these uh like caribbean-esque islands here is the is the distance of the tip of brazil to the uh galapagos essentially which is a fairly decent distance uh not yeah, as yeah but it's, not, it's not. still not exceptionally far though when you compare it to like if going the opposite way and going from uh, Spain all the way around Africa to India. True. True, 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 true. They're also marginally closer 
than yeah. uh, what is what is wrong with you guys there's 11 people watching this what's wrong with you people uh they are all probably hung over <laughs> or something and they wanted something to chill out too you have nothing better to do i'm not complaining but come on guys come on come on <laughs> right I just the, the last time I looked down there, there was only six was like something people watching. <laughs> Fucking eleven people back in here. Um, uh, I gotta say, here's the thing: I like I like the Surviving Mars soundtrack because um, if you don't know soundtracks for video games are are super geared towards maintaining your concentration because they want you to keep playing the game and kind of it drives you to keep going play the doom eternal soundtrack like no yeah balls. actually i do like the doom eternal soundtrack it's fairly good it's great the um, doom soundtracks are great to be honest with you Make yeah but that's the general thing so like i like example like i knocked out the entirety of radio kaiserreich episode 4 script to the surviving mars soundtrack I don't know why, but I expected you to go to um, to to the German anthem on repeat or something. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I'm glad I can provide some decent world building, or at least some some world building content. I don't know if it's good, but it exists. It's here. Like, so that's 20, what I can. Twenty one's break off. Yeah, I want to say 21's we'll say. a break-off. So I want to say, like, 20 and 21 used to be together as a major, like, colonial holding. Yeah. Uh, and then they broke 20 could off. belong to 6, say. And then 22 could belong to 10. Or 24 could belong to 10. No, 24 is, is a collection of of, uh, of aboriginal, like, uh, like tribes oh. and stuff. Like, there's sub... Like, 20... it doesn't show up on the, on the stream, but those are, like, sub-borders that exist ah. between, like, tribal lands is my idea so i've got like a, a whole bunch of like smaller so 20 uh 21 22 and 23 are colonial, colonial and 24 is an actual native settlement yeah, like area okay so it could be 23 belongs 23 or 22 belongs to 10 uh 20 and 21 20 currently belongs to 6 21 used to belong to 6 yeah so let's uh and 23 belongs to, I don't know, the Republic or something, because they were like, oh, there's mountains over there. Maybe they're full of good crystal gems for us to snort on the weekend. Uh, I don't know. We could figure out something for 23. But either way, um, it could also just be a, 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 an outcrop of 22, as it, but it's just two separate uh, colonial like uh, like governments. That, uh, That's true, yeah. Like two separate regional yeah. governments that, are, that have been set up. Uh, there are, there's exist. a nice border here. Let's stop that and we'll leave it yeah. there, sort there's of thing. Because there is a border here. Because if you don't know, um, a good way to draw your borders, and because I kind of brushed past this because I did all this last night uh, after the last stream ended, um, borders follow a, a lot of rules that exist, especially for, like, uh, developed nation borders. Uh, they follow, like, natural... Natural obstacles are the majority of where borders kind of lay, um, it's, uh, it's usually like rivers, hilly areas, uh, plateaus, mountains, basically anything like that, that natural defenses can exist in. But you also have like post industrial borders that start propping up with like this one here, which is, uh, just straight lines drawn on a map without regards to anything that exists previously. And those happen a lot. Uh, the further you go along in history, uh, because it, uh, because nation like natural defensible terrain becomes less and less important. So you kind of have to know what technology level you're kind of working with when you draw Because borders. now we have artillery pieces, and they don't give a shit about your mountains. Yeah. So let's uh, so let's think. So twenty is sixes colony. Yeah. Um, which uh, good on them, because uh, that's like huge, huge, um, compared to their huge. yeah, uh, compared to their original area. Uh, but so let's say, uh, I mean, hey, Britain was tiny, even though it owned most of the world. Is very true. That is very true. Uh, very dense 
population uh very so i mean what's... even like at the height of the british empire the there was very much less British people than there were actual people in the Empire, I'd say. Very true, very true. Um, so let's say... Uh, I'm still amazed. I'm looking at my stream stats. The max we we, we hit was 16 concurrent viewers for like a half hour. <laughs> Don't understand it. Don't understand you Could people. be a confederation, yeah. Yeah, it could be a confederation. 21, uh, 21 or 24 will be a confederation. But twenty four might yeah. be uh, might be uh, uh, something something confederation of like uh, twenty whatever. could be a protectorate like the uh... protectorate implies that it's a because that doesn't actually work because a protectorate is a label for a, a, a specific type of government a specific type of nation where it's like um, it's it's formed to it's formed as a separate. A logistical and administrative layer for an area that is designed to defend a specific area. So, well, it does own all those mountains there. Like the, it does, uh, like but that doesn't. That range. means it's not really a protectorate. Like if it was, yeah. you would like uh like a good example here. Um, so like, uh, uh, let's say like five wanted to create a protectorate for some reason, like you know, hypothetical for some reason, it would probably like create an administrative zone along its uh this like contour line um and that would be like nominally independent for protection along that like north eastern border and it would be it would be a protectorate because its entire purpose was to protect that avenue or that kind of thing um it, it is a specific type of government as a protectorate. I, I'm trying to stay away from some of the, the shortfalls because world building, there are some shortfalls in world building that prop up a lot and like labeling a country kind of that doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really work or it, it, I want to, or is a thing that happens a lot. I don't want to really make it more of a, uh, more of a thing. Um, uh, and yeah, George, uh, the red area here is a disputed territory between uh, between uh, the uh, the Kilfin Empire and the Grand Empire of uh, Thress uh, uh, Thessera. Uh, I'll I made these names. I can pronounce them. God damn it! Uh, it's just one big disputed area. Uh, it's like a equivalent to like a Kashmir uh, kind of thing. Uh, there's got to be some type of, I haven't worked it out yet, but some type of uh, fairly valuable resource in these like uh, mountainous regions uh, that are important. And they're both fighting over it, but nobody, no other nation is willing to give them recognition of their holdings. So they're kind of just both in like this uh, conflict over it. So yeah, uh, 20 is from six. And now I got to think of a name and colonies are usually named after regions in the original um, nations, like territory. So I got to think if uh, 20 is from the, uh, the Umber Isle, that was who colonized it. So the Umber Isle, so Umbra. So I'm trying to think of like a, a root like a root uh, idea for their seems like a new well um, it belongs to six so if you're going with the, so the methodology the British have it could be called like well they like to call things new they, they called like what was it the 13 colonies were initially called Newfoundland or was that uh, Canada that's the, that is a that is a province in Canada right now Newf Newfoundland yeah um, but there was also like New Holland, and uh, there's New, also New like York. 17 different Dublins in uh, in in the U.S., which is funny. Mm. I'm thinking maybe going ahead with 20, maybe going with like a uh... well, you could grab like the name of a city and be like that belongs to that that city will be in that country in the future, like New. Well, I keep going with New Brunswick just because that falls into my head for some reason. Maybe New 
carts. Thinking maybe new carts wall. Sounds sufficiently Britishy. Carts wall. Yeah. And carts wall could be a uh, could be a uh, like a coastal town. Yeah, it could be a port city. Could yeah. have been. It could have been the port city where like the initial settlers set set, set off from. Yeah. So this is new carts wall. Yeah. And then 21 is the breakaway state. And now I need to try and, uh, because of the way this works, I need to try and figure out what this continent is named. Uh, it could be called Nash Holland, literally. So it's like, this is, this is the place where you want to live if you'd like freedom. Because, you know. United Territories, United Provinces... Well, I'm trying to think. Uh... United Provinces of Okma. Of Okerma. Sorry, not Okma. The continent could have been called Okma by the locals, and then when these guys broke off, they were like, hey, we'll name our new nation after the actual name of the continent that the locals gave it. I'm just I'm looking through some ideas I've got here. Let me uh a root for no, that doesn't really work. I'm trying to think of something that flows out of the tongue. Drink. No. No. Uh Maybe United Provinces, or we could go with the Confederated Provinces, or Confederated, Confederated. I like Confederated. United. I like Confederated because it's it's not as it's not as common. Um, and I would the think Confederated they, Territories, the Confederated Nation, the Confederated. Uh, and a Confederated uh, Nation doesn't really work because Confederated in, implicates that the. Uh, is that the the overall structure is less important than the individuals because uh, a confederation is a more decentralized democracy or is a more decentralized version of like a united states kind of thing um for it see this is the kind of thing you gotta think about when you're doing world building <laughs> uh so i'm thinking confederated republic Confederated. Uh, can, okay, well, let's go Confederated Terror. Yeah, right? I'm just fucking I'm just blanking on spelling. Terror. Yeah, Confederated Territories of I'm thinking continent name Oryx. The Confederated Territories of Oryx. Yeah. Yeah, cursor. It's like um, that's my big thing is I don't like having is, is I like putting the the effort in, cause it doesn't like. I get what you're saying. Like, cause I that that's my big pet peeve as well is when things don't really work out. Um, like I love like a good example is I love the expanse like as a series and like a setting, but. Like, I'll, I'll admit, like, I don't necessarily understand what the hell's going on with, like, the label, the nation of Mars. 
because why does is the Martian Congress important enough to be part of the name of the nation? Um, the, I think it, in their case it was just like they had to throw together a, a government because they sort of went fuck you Earth. I guess, but yeah, but it's still like you know there are things like that. Like I, I like putting the effort in to, to like naming things so it makes sense because like yeah, cool. It does sound kind of interesting, like Martian Congressional Republic, uh, but like by definition i think like a, a republic kind of has to have a congress so it's kind of like a uh, doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense unless the congress is like a super big and important part of their nation so i don't know okay so we're at 22 now so we're at nation 22 22 i think the is... thing is is that not all republics call their congress the congress it's true, but then that doesn't. I mean, they have some sort of body that exists, you know, in their their nation. So now, they just want to let you know what 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 they call it, you know. Yeah. They so want to let you know it's it's a congress 10, here. Ten colonized, twenty two. So let's. Uh, I'm also gonna put uh, uh, for new carts wall. I'm gonna put a little thing there so I know which nation they came from. Uh, so 22, let's think about this. 22, it's got to be, I don't want to go exactly the same thing. So let's say, uh, let's try and do like a Virginia kind of thing where it's a, it's a be name. A Republic. Well, I wanted like to. A merchant Republic made a, uh, like they said, okay, we're going to run this colony like a merchant Republic because it's meant to be that or something. Well, I want to, like, we're, we're merchants or something. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Maybe we're... the merchant class, you know, were the only people who could afford to send people out there, and they were like, "All right, it's now a merchant merchant colony." Yeah, uh, Chris, sir, this is uh, this is like 1910s, 1920s kind of uh, technology level. But you know, for bolt action rifles and thing and. Um clip-fed pistols are common, but I don't imagine you get very many, like, you know, semi-automatic weapons. It's not it's not that common yet, I don't imagine. Uh, no, they wouldn't be. Unless it would be, like, big things, like water jacket cooled stuff. Uh, like and, the, uh, and even then, I'm the not expecting this... One? I'm not expecting this world to exist, uh, to have had recently, like, a major world war, so, like, technology level in terms of weaponry would still be fairly backwards uh or or at least the technology might be up there but ta uh, but tactics might not be um yeah part of the thing i want in this book is i like the idea of like mages as a military branch um like in my head like uh like okay this isn't really a part of the world building of the names and stuff like that but in my head i i have a like the the algon the algon war mage or the uh, the algon uh mage uh, college or whatever I'm going to call them I, I for some reason I have in my head that the Algon mages are, are tr like trace their lineage back to like cavalry kind of troops so like their uniforms are very, are very cavalry esque even at, to Chuck the detriment boots. of their abilities to actually perform their actions because I like you know have like the tight pants and the and the really high boots and stuff, even though they mo they're mostly on foot now, and it's kind of like ridiculous, even for like this time period. Uh, but that's because the mages they're, are really, uh, like, stooped in tradition. They're super, super uh, specialist shock troops. Yeah, maybe I don't even think that much. I think like uh, I'm thinking they could be, but I'm thinking in the terms of like military strategy in Algon, they are kind of, you know, they're kind of treated how machine gun uh, units were treated in the British Empire before World War One. Because if you don't know. They were basically considered. Uh, They're basically considered like, like, uh, for backwater positions. Like I think there's a story of pre World War One military exercises where like a cavalry unit, there uh, was uh, was engaged like it was an exercise so there wasn't any shots fired but like you know an officer they'd set up positions, uh, this machine gun uh, uh, section. This officer set up positions like kill zone and everything like that and then the all these like you know cavalry officer you know cavalry troops like got in formation and they were setting up in front and everything like they were getting ready for a charge and the officer of the machine just came out and go like all right well you're all dead 
you're in our kill zone. And like the, the cavalry officer was just like shouting the guy down, just like, how dare you? That's not how wars fight. It's not how wars fought against good Christian European men. Uh, Cause it was thought to yeah. be machine guns were only used against uh, natives at that point. So it was like, I'm thinking of kind of a similar thing in terms of just like, they're not necessarily respected as a, as a military um, unit. Uh, or their potential isn't really understood at that point uh, in my head, at least. Again, you know, it's it's still kind of up in the air. I'm, I'm still working on the general world-building aspect of it, but I have a plot line in, in, in my head. Um, so, 22, I'm thinking... I've got, I'm thinking of trying to make a name into, like, a label for an area. Like a Virginia kind of thing. Or Georgia kind of thing. Because Virginia was named after, uh, I think, Victoria... Or, or something like that, and uh, Georgia was named after uh, King George. So I'm gonna think of a name. Well, have you decided on? I don't. I don't think we've decided on who occupies these nations. Well, we can we can extrapolate based off of um, naming. So would number ten be using a? So Russian be, allegory. So that'd be yeah. Or... So that'd be like this. Would be like the Trelands. So they'd be like Finnish or or Russian kind of Slavic, uh, in terms of that. So so I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of like so. Dutria, based off of I don't know King Dimitri. Yeah, that could work. So, how would I spell that? D Detria. Uh, D. Be a D, obviously. D. 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 Be D. I. D. Be Detria. Detria. Let me go with Detria. D try up. Well, I, I, yeah, that could work. I'm just trying to think. Uh, so D try. Uh, try. Yeah, simple. D try. Uh. Yeah, that works. Uh, we're gonna call that just D try. Uh, and give us our little hint here, so we know who they came from. Twenty three. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, to try a. So we got to try a for King Dimitri or something like that. That works out enough. Um, 23. I like the idea of 23 just being a separate. Like a separate colonial govern. Like a separate colonial government, but still being from uh, uh, Trifland. Still being. Uh, Triflindian uh, uh, colonized, so... That could be another one where it's named after, like, the city where the people set off from? Nah, because we've already got that. We've already got that, and it's bordering each other. I mean, that exists. I mean, obviously, that's, that is a thing that exists in our, like, reality. Um, but I don't want to be too on the nose with it, because, you know, while our actual reality there was like something like a hundred something sovereign states that existed at one point uh even d during 1910s uh there's only 50 in this one so i don't want to be too on the nose um something you could go with the united with the uh united provinces thing again like the united Pro or the uh confederated or something i think there's a confederated nation nearby as well Ooh, 23 could be a dominion it could be a yeah, high. It could be a, It could be a more independent governance that exists. It could be a, a more independent form. The dominion of, of X, or the dominion of Y, or dominion of yeah. Also, uh, Demetria could be named after a hero in the uh, in the lore of the uh, of those people. So instead of it being named after a person or a king, it could be named after a piece of lore. Yeah, it could be. Which is, um, you know, which is a different take. 
Um, so I'm thinking 23 would be... Uh, a dominion. The dominion of... Cobra? And then, and then we'd have to think of like a, what that region's called of uh of Rex. so what would, what would that be called you think of like uh Rix. it's the southern part of Rix. it's like a uh, part of a lake it's got a river valley in it some big mountains uh one of the largest rivers runs through it um so the dominion the dominion of I'm gonna say Hall Vada. I'm gonna say Hall Vada. Uh, that works. That works. And now we've got like the uh, the native area of the uh, the continent. Well, I'm going to have to leave you because I actually have a Dean. I have a Pathfinder game in about ten minutes, so I'm oh, going to have okay. to go and go for that. All right. So, uh, I'll Thank see you, you during the week, Roach. Yeah, yeah. See you during the week. Peace. Okay. So let's let's keep going here. And yeah, I, I missed your original post, uh, uh, Kursar. I, uh, that's kind of one of the reasons I liked that idea was that it could create some interesting plot points and conflicts. Uh, that and also I have an, I already have the main character, or at least one of the main like titular characters in the novel already kind of worked out in my head. Uh, so I want to, so that'll also create some conflict uh, for it. So yeah, kind of. Uh, the idea is that the individual that uh, that the primary store is about uh, you know tribes of like um, I don't really want them to be united though I want them to infight a lot like this is just kind of like an area that they've been kind of forced into so I could just say like uh, like uh, uh, like uh, like uh, Uruk's tribal lands like like uh, tribal lands of Uruk could be a thing. Kind of go with that. And then we got 25. Just all the way over here. And this is where the majority of the names are going to come in. We have a lot. So 25 is all the way up here. And see, the idea behind this area is I want it to be not as not as colonized um i'm still thinking 37 and 44 are both colonies uh that and possibly um 30 are colonies but all the rest i'm thinking are like local governments uh local tribes or like undeveloped nations that kind of exist here i think i want this to kind of be like the equivalent of an africa um and although i mean in like 1900 like colonialism existed uh, pretty heavily here, but I want this to be more of a, um... Uh, what would it be? Like, uh... Kind of like an Africa or an Asia, in a way, because the, uh... It, it not being as easy to have colonized, it's more of a, uh... Uh, it's more of just, like, areas, uh, that they were, uh, that the colonial powers were able to exploit and, cre and get, like, large sections of territory, and then from there they've kind of been stopped... Uh, or they just haven't had the, the the will to push past it. So that was, that's kind of the thing I'm wanting uh, as a feel here. And uh, this is going to be difficult because those are native names for these areas, and that's going to be a lot of very... Uh, it's going to be a lot of names. Uh. 
So we're kind of working through that. I gotta try and think on here. Hmm. Yeah, like they don't have they don't have uh f like they don't have the tech yet. Yeah, that's a good that's a good uh thing. One of because uh one of the main reasons why uh, like colonization happened very quickly at a certain point was because of the explosion and uh in machine gun technology and stuff like that because that allowed for a disproportionate amount of firepower to be used by a smaller amount of people. Um that and like repeating arms and uh, you know, the, the cartridge-based rifles and stuff like that. Um, and all those exist here. I would, I'd still think it'd be more... I, I, I don't think they have the ability to yet, is the idea. So the, uh, we're kind of at that point in, colon, in the co colonial system. Uh, so yeah, I'm just trying to think here because I'm I'm trying to think of like an i of a, of an i um an identity so that I can work off of names from that. Uh, welcome back, Colin. Um, though I am going to be honest, guys, I have been up for almost at this point twenty hours, uh, or more. So I haven't slept in a long time. Uh, given the <laughs> which. Surprising, given the fact that I've been able to think up 24 names, with your help, uh, for fictional areas. Uh, also, make sure I save this. Uh, so I am I'm running a little low on steam, guys. Uh, I don't want to have another cup of, uh, of tea. For fear that my heart will explode. So... Just trying to think here. I'm thinking because 25 is the next one we need. 25 is like a small nation. I might go ahead and I think. What? How long have we been going for? It's only been like an hour or two. Wow, it's almost been three hours. Jesus Christ. Time really does fly when I'm spending time with you guys. It's kind of amazing, actually. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm just thinking I might go ahead and call the stream here. You know, it's almost 2 o'clock. I started this back at 11. Uh, and we got most of the map named. I'm sure... I'm sure somebody could make a map like this in, in certain mapping programs... I'm not sure what the uh, I'm not sure what the limitations are in the Civ Six World Builder, um, but yeah, we got most of the world named. We just got one continent left to name, uh, which I might do in my spare time, uh, and then come back uh, next week with like I'm not sure what we'll do next week after I get this done. I might just start doing like uh, like writing or world building like in the text format. Uh, next week, so we'll, we'll I'll figure something out. Either way, I think I'm gonna end the stream here because I'm starting to run out of steam, uh, and I definitely need a clear head for naming stuff. So uh, I don't don't expect a stream until probably next Saturday. Uh, so we'll uh, uh, that that's when I'll probably come back. That's when I will have some time. Um, yes, uh, Colin. Uh, also, be on the lookout. I'll probably post this map. Like, I, I, I'll probably export this map uh, and post it, like, either on my co uh, community post or on my Discord at some point if you guys wanted to take a closer look at it. So. This isn't a uh, terrain map. Uh, Colin, this is a, this is just a, uh, altitude map. Like, all of the different colors are, uh, contour lines. 
So like I can I can bring up like the guide here. So like all of these are contour lines going from sea level to top of the mountains as continental shelf all the way to the lower seas. So that that's just kind of what it is. This is the standard color uh format for contour line maps uh in like world atlases or atlases in general. Uh so yeah, that that's why there's uh that's why the coloring is what the way it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to head off. Thank you guys for joining me for this stream. Uh, really, thank you for helping me come up with ideas for uh, a lot of these names and helping me brainstorm. It's been great. Uh, but I'll see all of you next week, hopefully, uh, for some more world building uh, in this world. See ya.